by the incident with the son's governor. Like, the I, talk about ridiculous. The idea of a suspension for Nikola Jokic for that is ridiculous. A technical was too far as far as I'm concerned. But when you come down, or oh, was it a block or a charge? I don't think he, the owner the owner flopped because that's a 300 pound man giving you an elbow. Not that he, he should have <laughs> given the elbow, but he but he gonna move you if he want to move you. <laughs> Listen, it was a it was definitely an elbow from a very large Serbian man, so I would probably fall back as well. But there was a little addition of the arms flailing in the sky. Listen, I, it, to <laughs> me it was like a hey sons, this is how you get a call. Let me throw my hands up, arch my back a little bit, fall into the seat. You know, here's at the end of the day. If this were a normal fan, they would have been removed. And I am not saying that he is a normal fan by any means at all. However, I think you need to be held to a standard. If you're going to be courtside, you got to act right. I don't think he should have been involved in getting the, his hands on the ball, getting near Jokic close enough to where he could put his hands on him. I think there were a lot of things wrong with it. I'm not saying that Jokic is innocent, but a suspension would be absolute ludicrous, in my opinion. Michael, hold on real quick. Can we go back to the uh, to the loop again? Can we talk about dudes? Speaking of large Serbian men, live moves. Can we talk about the dude in the uh, the Suns polo and how he actually like reached for Nikola Jokic as if like what if Jokic? What are these players gonna haul off? And my, as my mom used uh. to say, pop the piss out one of these dudes. <laughs> right. <laughs> some people, I, some people have just not been rocked yet, and it is very abundantly clear. And if I'm gonna get rocked by someone, I'm not choosing Jokic as my first as my first person to do it. That is for sure. So I, he just, I guess that guy is just a ballsy individual because I would never, ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm he put real, his hands up in his. He put his hands up in his chest too. Like what? What you? What you? What you trying to do here? It, it, it Not to, to mention, Jokic's brothers are can't be far, and they're ten times scarier <laughs> right. than he is. He's you know got a whole like action. group. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. I'm good. I'm staying far away from that for sure. So, listen, Liv. I, I said to Michael earlier, I'm surprised that the series is 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 two apiece because I thought with uh, Chris Paul going out with his uh, very unpredictable injury. Nobody could have seen that coming. Chris Paul being hurt. Could you stop um, doing that? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no. my god! But I, I just thought was going to be hurt. <laughs> I know he's not. I know he's not. Just, just, just things just kind of happened to him. But I thought with Chris Paul being out, that Denver would at least, what you know, split in Phoenix. Are you surprised that it's a two-two series now? Absolutely. And it, it's awful, and I hate it. And it, I was like wanting to throw up last night watching the game. I think. They did not have an answer for that Suns bench. I don't think they anticipated the bench was going to show up the way that it did. I certainly didn't think that someone like Landry Shamit was going to show up and do what he did, but he did. And I think what happened was we saw at the beginning of this series, KD and Booker cannot be stopped. They just can't. There is no answer for them. So what do you do? You double team them. Well, now you've left the bench completely available from the three-point line, and they are splashing threes on your head the whole game. There was no answer. What a waste of a 53-point performance by Jokic because the defense couldn't show up. It was, to me, very frustrating. I think this has been a momentum swing in this series, whereas before I thought the Nuggets had complete control of this series. But, yeah, I don't know. There's a few players with the Nuggets that I think need to heat up a little bit. I want to see MPG used more and used more efficiently. There's some things that they can fix offensively, but defensively, if they don't have an answer for Booker and Durant, then they at least need to have an answer for the bench because it was embarrassing. In case you don't know or in case you can't tell by her decor, Liv <laughs> is a hardcore Nuggets fan, Denver sports fan uh, in general, but Nuggets in particular. Um, yes. Before we get to, uh, I want to talk to you also about uh, Sixers, uh, Celtics and you too, obviously, Michael. Um, but I want to kind of like segue with this. Speaking of momentum, Liv, as there was more and more momentum in favor of Joel Embiid uh, being named MVP after he had been denied mm -hmm. the last couple of years by the more than deserving Nikola Jokic, there was a lot of talk about, you know, well, Jokic. He doesn't go anywhere in the playoffs or, you know, he's underachieved as, as if he hadn't won those MVPs because he was oftentimes doing more with less or as we saw in the last couple of games when he's off the floor, Denver typically the early in the pre early in the postseason. They were good with him off the floor, but ordinarily they haven't been great with him off the floor. They've been bad with him off the floor. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you fast forward to now and even in defeat, 
And in a 2-2 series, let's say they go down to what I think is the best, the most dynamic duo in the NBA. Like, shouldn't this postseason, and this series in particular, and the performance we saw last night, we've seen the last couple of games, shouldn't that put to rest any notion about Nikola Jokic being some kind of media creation or being some kind of undeserving two-time MVP just because he does not have a championship? Do you understand what I'm getting at? I, absolutely. And it's been a conversation I've had many times and I've been very frustrated every time I've had the conversation because, of course, no matter what I say in favor of Nikola Jokic, I'm a homer, right? You see the banner behind me. I don't hide it. I love the Denver Nuggets. Born and raised since Carmelo Anthony was in the Silky Blues and the Braids. I've loved mm -hmm. them for a very, very long time. But I will tell you, we are we are viewing this war a, a whole lot differently right now. And I think had Nikola Jokic not been back to back, he would have had it this year. And I think had he not been back to back, it wouldn't have been Embiid's award. And I and I don't that is not discrediting what Embiid does for the Sixers. But if we're talking most valuable, uh, the 76ers throughout the regular season actually had a record of 11 and five without Joel Embiid. And then we saw it again when he joined the playoffs after his injury, uh, they lost. And James Harden went from having a 45 point game to a 12 point game. So if we're talking most valuable, I think the conversation is shifting. I don't think that Embiid to me is an exceptional player with a lot of talent and he is absolutely uh, a difference maker for the 76ers most valuable. That's a different conversation. And I think we opened a big can of worms the moment we talked about Nikola Jokic with this tone of he's good, but quit following it with a but he's great the same way we we stick Steph Curry high up to the heavens when he has an outstanding performance it needs to be the same way that we talk about Nikola Jokic, but there's always a but it's always he hasn't won yet. I, I hate that. I, to be honest, I hate that ring culture stuff because yeah, he hasn't won yet. Give him a chance to like, he's getting yeah. there. He's doing what he needs to do right, right. now. So I don't know what else, yeah, I don't I, know what else he's supposed to do uh, last night. <laughs> right, right, you know? right. Yeah, he's, he's been live. He's been described as an analytics darling, which sounds like a compliment, but it's kind of some shade thrown in there. You watch him every game. What is it about his game that maybe people who don't watch him regularly don't understand or don't realize there's something in his game that you don't quite see if you don't see him every day. What is it? It's effortless. It is effortless. He does things that are that, that I think that's maybe why some people have an issue with how he plays is because he at aesthetic. times he does look lazy and he does look like he's maybe not in the best physique that we would expect an MVP to be in. But shouldn't that terrify people like, OK, let him get into Giannis shape. I don't think anyone wants to see that. I don't think any team in the league wants to see Jokic like that. He, Jokic is doing what he needs to do exactly how he does it. And I think he's he's coming at it from such an untraditional way. It's effortless. When I watch it live in ball arena, if I blink my eyes, I miss some of his assists. They happen so yeah. quickly and so effortlessly. He's just playing a style that it just looks it looks all too easy and i think that's what pisses people off is that it doesn't look yeah. hard for him and they don't like that i'm gonna be pissed if i hear any nikola jokic uh playoff underperforming or underachieving talk if they are to lose even as the number one seed somebody else who michael and i have, have fought about quite a bit um let me make sure i, I get this right uh Liv, because i know you're in the information michael not so much but um, James Harden's <laughs> 42 points, okay, yep. yesterday, put him in the company with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Jerry West as the only guards in NBA history to score 40 or more points in a playoff game more than 10 times. That's for all you people who think that James Harden is just nothing but a choker. And I know he's had some moments where, you know, he got some lodged in his throat, but right now, like James Harden, is right. He he's the difference maker. You talk about MB being a difference maker. It's it's, it's obvious when, when James Harden goes off. That's when the, that's when the Sixers win. It's, it seems that simple to me. If you're looking at MVP for the 76ers team, it should not be Embiid, and it absolutely should be James Harden. And I think what happens is we get stuck in this statistic culture of. Well, Embiid had 30, 10, and 5, and whatever, but there's two sides of the court. And James Harden, to me, he hustles, he's facilitating, and when J and when Joel Embiid is not playing, which we have seen a few times with his injuries and whatnot, 
James Harden is riding, rising to the occasion every single time. I love the fire that he brings in the playoffs. And I think we've seen him in some situations, especially playoff situations where maybe he wasn't in the best environment in terms of team. The team wasn't the right fit. And I think people love to hold on to the, those moments. Uh, to me, James Harden is absolutely yeah. the most valuable player on the 76ers team. Without a doubt. Yeah, those, those, yeah, yeah I, people I, love to hold on to those moments, Michael. And, yeah. and pay no oh, attention hey, to the fact uh -oh. that in, people pay no pay no attention, Michael, to the fact that in games two and three he was crap. Like, no, it's what have you done for me lately? Oh, you just said, hey, you just what have you done for me lately? I'm just focused you on one my line. What are like, for? Hold on there. Yeah. <laughs> hold on to those moments from last week because it just happened last week with this team. Games two and three. The worst two games of his career, back to back. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey, worst two games hey, of his career. So, hey, so I, I, I like the, I like the story yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> for the fans of gospel music. For the fans of gospel music, uh, Doc yeah. Rivers sent him a, uh, sent him a gospel song, Do seven you know minute my gospel name? song that he listened to. Yeah. You know my name, uh, uh, before game four, and he went off. Now listen, that was great. James Harden, give him props. He had a great game one, great game four, disastrous game two and three. But this would all be a side note if, now I know this is, it's really hard to do. I want to see if you guys can do it. See if you can follow me. I'm not much of a dancer. Let's see if you can do this. Can you do that? <laughs> you do that, Joe Missoula. Can you do that? Joe Missoula, 18 yeah. seconds left in overtime. They got the ball. All you gotta do is call a timeout. It's a great thing. Yeah. You call a timeout, get the ball at half court. You can yeah. you got all you got you got time to strategize even if yeah. you don't like what you see he had two timeouts left him in his pocket they don't get a shot in 18 yeah. seconds in overtime and and at the end of regulation and at the end of overtime same guy has the ball in his hands not Jason Tatum not Jalen right. Brown. It's Marcus Smart. That's exactly. That's exactly what the, what the Sixers want. That's what they want too. Hey, listen. I, I think Boston. Boston is a better team here, but they may not win the series. And I think their coach has something to do with it. He's he's been a liability in two games. He's been a liability in game one. Liability in game four. I think it'll be self sabotage. That's how they'll be eliminated. I think it will be they're standing in their own way type of thing. I think that they are absolutely the more talented team. Uh, they they've got the stronger roster, no doubt. However, I think if if they blow it, it'll be all on them. And I think it's crazy to me the score that we had in that game, as close as it was with as many calls that were in Jason Tatum's favor, that man gets away with murder. That man gets away with whatever he wants when it comes to a to a non foul call. So to me, if, if it were a little bit more even on both sides in terms of the whistle, I mean, that offensive push off right at the end, it was clear oh, as yeah. day and, and, and they got away with it. And to me, hey, that listen. was a game changer. Well, that was a huge live, game changer. Live, live. Michael, Michael Jordan got his sixth championship on a similar play on Brian Russell. Uh, no, shook him off. No. He pushed no, off. Dog. That's a push off. It's a push off. And then that, the no, call. Come that on is now. that is that is gathering yourself with Jordan. Uh, did. What, Tat what Tatum did was basically what Nikola Jokic did to the right Suns governor last night. That's right. Hey, that's right. Hey, Lil, before hey, we let you go. Build yourself up a little bit more, Max. You got to build your, build your chest up a little bit more. Come on. <laughs> Liv, you got any, you got any, what bets you taking going into tonight? This is for Michael. Ooh. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> this is a tough one. You know what? I think that I think the Lakers can win, but I do like the Warriors to cover. I think it is down to the wire, neck and neck. I think yes. it's a close one. Uh, I do yeah. think, again, Hopefully. I think that the Lakers can absolutely win, but I do think it'll be close. So I would say take the Warriors to cover in this one. All right. I like that, man. All things covered. I like hey, Liv, it. thank you so much, man. We love your work. Hey, thank you. Check out Liv Moves on the volume. Follow her on Twitter, Instagram. You do great work. Thanks for falling through. And Thank you so we much. You. Thank you for having me. We'll see you soon. Always. Absolutely. Lo love all those Warriors logos too. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.